Hello, Oscillator Sync here. One of my favorite things to do with a synth is to try and push it to do things beyond the scope of normal synth stuff. The Neuro Mono is a two oscillator analog mono synth with a built-in sequencer. And while it can certainly do the 303 vibes in spades, if that's what you're after, it has a bunch of features, both in terms of the synthesis on offer, but also within its sequencer, which uh, beg you to take it out of that comfort zone. In a couple of previous videos, I've talked about some of these features and applied them to, for example, turning it into a drum machine. But during the course of making and editing that video, I started wondering to myself, given all of these features and with maybe the help of a couple of pedals, is it possible to arrange a kind of live set using the mono as the soul synth? So that's what you're gonna hear shortly, uh, five jams where the uh, Neuro Mono is the only synth involved. In the interest of transparency, uh, Neurand uh, sent me the Mono to make videos on, but I haven't been paid otherwise, and they've had no editorial input on the videos, and they certainly didn't ask me to do something like this. It's a challenge that I've given to myself because I think this is a really, really cool synth. So with silly challenges like this, uh, we need to set up some rules so that I can be silly in a serious way. Um, the only synth heard will be the mono, and the only sequencing is coming from the synth itself. Uh, no external MIDI input at all. Um, I am going to be allowing myself some time-based uh, effects. Uh, so I've got the Polara reverb, which is using various different algorithms depending on, on what suited the jam. And also I've got the uh, flashback delay here, um, which I've loaded in a tone print that I created myself, which um, removes the ability to um, use the delay knob uh, as delay, so you can only do tap tempo. But instead now on the um, delay knob, I have a filter on the delayed signal which allows me to do some sort of creative stuff, which is quite nice. And also the level control will push it into distortion past 12 o'clock, which then is quite interactive with the filtering as well. Um, I would offer to share this tone print with you, but um, it's uh, <laughs> really difficult to export them as far as I can tell, but if I work out how to do it, I'll um, pop that in the description of the video. Um, I'm not allowing myself to um, uh, use any looping or any pedals which sort of create new sounds out of thin air, so that means that things like the ox track and um, effects like Microcosm are uh, out of reach for this. I think it's a legitimate tactic to use in this challenge, but just not what I wanted to do for this one uh, in particular. Um, I've also got the uh, Electroharmonics platform uh, compressor on the table, which is doing sort of any sort of character compression that you hear during the jams. Uh, I'm mostly just using it to get a bit more impact from the kick and snare sounds that I'm creating. Um, and despite you seeing it hitting quite high um, gain reductions during the jams, the effect is pretty um, subtle. It's just kind of a nice thickening and, and a bit of an extra bit of attack. Um, I have allowed myself the luxury of mastering the jams in the box, so a normal mastering chain of EQ, a little bit of saturation, compression, and limiting is going on. But I'm not doing anything that's sort of particularly extreme. Um, I think I'm going to reflect on the process involved in putting these five jams together a little more in uh, another video a little bit later. So if you have any questions or uh, anything you'd like me to try and cover, then please let me know in the comments, um, or if you're watching this on the premiere, then uh, in the live chat. Okay, right. Um, here comes the music.
Thank you.